right? And so today I'm going to have to um, go ahead and do day nine. I did. I said day nine yesterday and I was like, you are off. Um, your days are off. So I realized yesterday was actually day eight and today is day nine. And so I wanted to hop on here uh, with you guys because today we're going to cover oh, cover the concept of... Uh, let's like today we're going to cover the concept... Uh -oh. Hold on, y'all. I'm making sure... I have it set up right oh, here we go all right we're going to cover the concept of eliminate to elevate all right eliminate to elevate so I'm going to fix this real quick elevate it a little bit higher make sure that we're good to go but we're going to talk about eliminating to elevate all right as we are going through this whole do the hard things challenge it's about getting very clear on where you are where you want to be and what you need to do to make it happen and it is the ability to accept the hard things. Like what are the things that we look at that are intimidating, they're scary, they're overwhelming, they're frustrating, but at the same time, there are these are the things that are going to move the needle in your business, in your life, get you from where you are to where you wanna be. Um, and so we're gonna talk about eliminating to elevate. Now I was trying to prop this thing up because my little prop just fell. So give me one second. And I'm going to get this prop going a little bit higher. Ah. All right, here we go. So I'm going to make it go a little bit higher. All right, so y'all, I want to talk to y'all today about eliminating in order to elevate. Because a lot of us, we're going into a new year, guys. And it is super critical to understand kind of where you've been, what didn't work, and what you need to do moving forward. And I know for me personally, um, I just feel like it's time for a whole new season of transformation, right? A whole new season of elevation, a whole new season of, of, of shifting my perspective, shifting how I've been approaching things, shifting how I do things, shifting um, who I work with, how I work, and all these different things. And so today I want to talk to you guys about the hard thing today. And the hard thing that I want to recommend uh, that you guys do for today, which is official day nine, because I think I messed this whole thing all the way up. I was off by a day. Is to identify the BS in your life. All right. Identify the lies that you've been telling yourself that you are trying to convince yourself are truths that are really more distractions, hindrances and impairments. Um, you know, uh, there is this just I, I just I had a coaching call this morning uh, from a coach that I'm hiring and it was really good because, you know, you hire a coach to call you on your BS. They are there to actually see where you've been creating these comfortable barriers and boundaries to protect yourself and insulate yourself into this world that you wanted to formulate to make yourself feel comforted in your pain, right? Comforted in your chaos. And they're, they're there to knock down the walls and be like, that's BS. Like, that's not, that's a lie, <laughs> right? This is, this is kind of something that you've created and established and rooted yourself in as your truth. And it's time to actually remove this barrier out of your life so that you can be able to elevate. And so today I want to talk to you guys about cutting the BS out of your life and beginning to eliminate the things that you do not work, that are not working. In order to elevate y'all, you're going to have to eliminate. It just is what it is. Um, I, sometimes we, I think this lighting is better, but sometimes we think that if we add more things, we actually are going to make our situations better. But the truth is, is that the more we release, it's kind of like um, a parachute. Is that a parachute? Um, where is it a parachute or what's the thing? The balloon, the hot air balloons, right? So if you think about the hot air balloons, they have these sandbags and when, in order for them to get elevated, they actually throw the sandbags off, right? To actually uh, give themselves the opportunity for the oxygen to hit into the, the little balloon area and then it elevates them. But I want you guys to think about the sandbags in your life. Like what is the weight that you have been carrying? What are the lies that you have been carrying? What are the things that you're telling yourself you've got to be responsible for in order to make progress? So I'm going to share, share a, a little piece of my truth with you guys. You know, one of the things that I have been telling myself is that I had to stay in a certain space of what 
I was skilled at, right? Sometimes we get so comforted in our doing, and this was a conversation I just had, we get so comforted in our doing that we don't know how to become or how to be, right? So I was so caught up, and, and, and I want you guys to think about this, those of you who have gone on to college, you've gotten degrees, you've built years into a, a certain industry and years into um, your mastery of something, right? You've probably gotten a degree in nursing or a degree in engineering or a degree in something and you've convinced yourself that because this is what you've done for so long that you have to stick to that because it's what you do and you've now allowed that doing to become a part of your identity and as a result of making it a part of your identity you have actually taken ownership over a life that has kept you away from who you know you really are called to be that has nothing to do with your 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 vocation Right. And so you've been living in this world of limitation because you're like, I can't do anything else because I got a degree in engineering. I got a degree as a nurse. I got a degree in, in, in being an attorney. I got a degree in med school. I got whatever, whatever you've been telling yourself. And the truth is, is you might have a passion to do something else. You know, I have a good friend. We went we were in school together. I got an IT degree. And uh, we went to college together and she was brilliant, smart. She's the one that kept me in school because I wanted to quit every day. And we would go through coding and all this stuff. And when she graduated, she went on and got this IT degree, uh, IT job, getting paid big money. And I remember I went to visit her and everybody calls me knickknack. She was like, knickknack, I'm so miserable. She was like, I hate this. She was like, I, I, this is not what I want to do. And I was like, well, what do you really want to do? And she was like, I want to do hair. She's like, I want to go to cosmetology school. And I was like, why don't you? She was like, I got the degree from my dad. She was like, I did this for my dad. And I was like, well, why don't you just go do what you want to do? You did that for your dad. Now do something for you. And I remember she ended up getting laid off and she went back to a little community college to cosmetology school. And now she owns her own salon. And now I'm helping her start her own hair um, product line. And I'm helping her build this whole business model online to, to build this brand. Right. And so it, it amazes me because if she would have stuck with the IT world, she would have stuck in a, st st stood in a place of misery for years upon years because that's what she got a degree in. That's what she was skilled in. That's what paid the most money at the time, right? But now here it is. She's running her own salon. She's starting her own um, training school for natural hair. She's starting her own hair care products. You know, she's starting this whole movement around who she is and what she really enjoys because this girl loves and can tell you everything about natural hair right and so a lot of us are in these places and spaces of holding on to our vocation instead of operating and moving into a place of our calling and it's time to eliminate in order to elevate and so here's here's my challenge for you guys today because I can't be long it's a lot going on it's a little bit later in the day I got calls back to back today and all kind of things that I have to make happen but here's the thing that I want you guys to think about today what are the BS lies that you've been telling yourself right what are the things that you have taken ownership over that don't belong to you? Who, whose demands, whose expectations, whose, um, whose recommendations, whose blueprint, whose process, whose, whose map have you adopted as your destiny? Because in order for you to really move into a place of growth, you're going to have to shed off these layers of skin that don't belong to you. It's almost like a snake, right? Where they go through a shedding. You'll see dogs, they shed their hair. You see different things. They have to take off these layers in order to become new, right? What layers and what pieces of your life do you need to shed off of you in order to blossom and in order to grow? I made a revelation yesterday. I said, I realized I don't want to be a marketer. <laughs> that's, that's my trade. That's what I've been doing for 12 years. But going into 2020, I will no longer be Nicole the marketer, right? You will associate me with a transformational movement that will really help people see a, a, a massive elevation of growth and progress, right? It is going to be connected to an outcome that is so much bigger than a tactical strategy, right? A tactic or a strategy. It has to be much bigger because that's not that what I have learned is not who I am. Right. So I am eliminating the titles in order to elevate 
my 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 being in order to elevate my positioning of how I serve in order to remove these barriers of what I feel obligated and forced and attached to that keeps me in this floundering box of well if I am this title then I must only do this and if I have if I'm known as this then I must only promote this or be this or uh, can show up as this it's giving me the ability to free myself up to rise and to now grow into a whole new place of being not doing but a whole new place of being because i'm allowing myself to elevate into a whole new role of of even more purposeful living right so eliminate the titles right eliminate the attachments to what you thought you wanted eliminate the expectations of what your parents suggested you had to do eliminate what you were doing before to impress people who you felt you had to impress eliminate these over committed obligations of what you thought you had to do in order to be seen as important right um there there's and i've been hearing this a lot lately but um and i even discovered it last week for myself while doing this hard things but they were like nicole you're attached to a, a, a you're attached to um performance you are attached to performing. So your level of identity has been connected to what you've accomplished. And you have to ask yourself, if you were to take that off, who are you? And I was like, man, that's a good question. I don't know. Right. And somebody else had told me that they were like, you're a performer. So you feel like in order for you to get credited or in order for you to have any level of um, any level of acknowledgement, you feel like you have to perform. And I was like, wow, where'd that come from? Well, I think about the fact that I was not a good in school. I was known as the trouble kid in school. And I remember the marks on my report card that would always say, um, not operating to her full potential, right? I would always, y'all remember the little computer generated report cards? I know in California, Los Angeles, it was computer generated. All the times that we went through school, they probably just pressed the button at number one or number two, and these little remarks will come up. And mine was always not oper not operating at her full potential, right? And so I, I scraped my way through school and I was always a disappointment to the teachers because I had all this potential and they never saw me live out in that potential. And then I went on to college, got on the honor roll my first semester and ended up feeling committed to have to get a degree. And I had to prove to the teachers who told me I wasn't working up to my potential that I do can work. I can work up to my potential. So now when I think about my adulthood and I think about my need to perform and my need to accomplish and my need to um, actually be a doer It's because I was taught my whole life that I wasn't doing enough and that I wasn't living up to it enough and I wasn't performing enough. And so then you become an adult and you're like, OK, I'm performing now. Is this good enough, teacher? Is it good enough to get the 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 um what is it? The excellent score instead of the unsatisfactory score you don't realize how these little childhood prompts and these little encounters in your earlier days actually create triggers for you as an adult and then you end up trying to become what you were once announced that you weren't as a as a as a level of proving that you can right who knew right this stuff is in your subconscious it's things that you don't even know you're playing up to that you begin to play to and so now that i'm an adult you have to unlearn these things you have to shed those layers you have to remove those those places and spaces and in order for me to do that it's all about eliminating to elevate right so now it's me eliminating the need to perform and the need to do more so i, I say this to you guys and i'm gonna wrap this up oh you gotta go okay love you have a good day kiss kiss uh-huh i know it's okay have a good day. I love you. Bye. Have a good day. You say hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. You and that, that's the Facebook. You got to put your peek your head over here in the Instagram camera. <laughs> you say hey. What's up, good people? Hey. <laughs> All right. Have a good day, babe. Um, so anyway, eliminate to elevate. What is the BS you've been telling yourself that you got to get rid of? What are the stuff layers you have to shed? What are the things you have to do differently? What are the necessary transformations that you're going to have to make? Um, what are the things that you finally have to commit to, right? What are the, uh, what, 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 what has to happen? What are, you got to start off with eliminating the BS. You got to eliminate the BS. And so I want to leave that with you guys today um, for day. I, I'm saying this is day nine. I, you know, I'm off by a day or two in this whole do the hard things challenge, but I want you, we'll fix it in the numbers when we number the videos. 
But I want you for today to ask yourself, what's the BS lies you've been telling yourself? What are the things that you have been growing accustomed to doing that really are hindering you from being who you need to become, um, from be evolving into the person that you need to become? I just had a, a very revolutionary call that was just what I needed. And I was like, thank you, God. Like, finally, I have somebody who sees it. They understand what I need and they can help me get to that next level. And it is an investment, y'all, baby. It is an investment, baby. Woo. Yes. And it's a scary thing, it's the hard thing, but it's the best thing for me in the season of my life because it is what is going to take me to the next level. So even confronting the fear of that exchange of the investment, confronting the fear of being vulnerable enough to have a coach coach me and show me my insecurities and show me my flaws and out, you know, point out the things that I thought were my trophies that are actually the the luggage that's holding me back, you know is being willing to do the hard things. And that is the hard thing that I'm doing this week is selecting a coach, investing in a program, saying that, yes, you know what? I admit, I confess, I need help. I have weaknesses, I have struggles. I'm drowning and I need somebody to come help show me how to swim the proper way. And um, and that is where my do the hard thing is for this week. So y'all make your list. That's the goal for today for this do the hard things is figure out what do you need to eliminate to elevate. Make a list of the BS stories that you feel you've been connected and attached to. And I will see y'all on tomorrow uh, for another do the hard things video. If you want to join us in the do the hard things challenge, make sure you guys head on over to NicolasCooper.com forward slash hard things. You actually will become get an invite to join our community you'll get access to our daily um our daily ta uh, daily tasks that we send you for the day and you're doing the hard thing and then also i'm doing a workshop this weekend on um how to transform your life by really being able to build out a a, a money activation plan for your purpose for operating from a place of where you know you want to be and we give you a blueprint we show you how to map that thing out we're doing a workshop this weekend on saturday and sunday if you have not registered nicole scooper.com forward slash 2020 vision nicole scooper.com forward slash 2020 vision it's all about getting in alignment with what you know you're called to do. Guys, I am no longer going to be teaching from a place of can do, but what are you called to do? And how do you align that calling with what you invest in daily to begin to, to create the platforms to operate in that call? And we'll talk about that on this weekend in the 2020 Vision Workshop. So NicolaScooper.com forward slash 2020 Vision. I'm going to wrap this video up. Y'all got a full day ahead. So y'all have a great, wonderful, awesome, and amazing day. Thank you for joining us. And I'll see you guys again tomorrow on the do the hard things challenge have a great day y'all bye